leadership is movement. If it's a journey or if it's a race, um, to, to, to borrow from Paul, uh, if it's all these things, then it needs a starter's gun to sort of kick it off. And for a pioneer leader, the starter's gun goes off twice. Uh, and the two shots of this starter's pistol are call and vision. The, the journey doesn't begin without them. In fact, if you start without them, the journey hasn't really begun. Call is the voice of God which sets you aside for a uh, unique journey. And vision is the destination that that journey is heading towards. And every leadership book uh, and podcast and sort of guru, whatever, all of them will tell you you've got to have vision. And vision, as we said, is just another name for destination. It's a, a sort of mental picture, a descriptive statement of, of your destination, of what it will look like when your journey has finished. And, th and these experts tell us sort of repeatedly that, that for every uh, leader, every organization, every movement, every church, everybody needs vision. Without vision, uh, you don't know where you are going. No one else knows where you are going. It's, it's not a, a journey. It's, 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 a, it's a ramble. You, you'll be prone to a distraction and, and detours. Uh, you'll easily be uh, distracted and detained. For, for every movement, the journey must have a destination. The leader must have vision. But, but actually, simply having vision isn't the most important thing. Anybody can, you know, cook up a, a vision after a curry and a couple of beers. Having vision is important. Where it comes from is absolutely vital. And in approximately 1400 BC, a, a shepherd was, was standing looking after his sheep in a fairly arid part of northwest Arabia. And this guy had, had been doing this for uh, half his life, lifetime, lest we you know, forget, for 40 years. And, and this shepherd, who we know to, to be Moses, 40 years ago had been in the prime position to fulfill what he felt was his growing call and vision in, in, in life and mission in life to save his people from slavery. And, and, and we know the sort of story of Moses. He was a Hebrew um, a prince in Egypt, he was disturbed by what he saw in front of him, his people groaning in slavery. He felt he should do something about it. And, and one day he, he, he saw a Hebrew being beaten up by an Egyptian and he stepped in and he killed him. Two things wrong with that. One, it was murder. And secondly, he, had, he did not have a story of discernment. He saw a problem, he sorted any kind of solution, but his movement failed before it had begun because it wasn't God's call, it wasn't God's vision. He did not have a story of discernment. And so 40 years after that, when it looked like his window of opportunity had gone, when he had lost his ideal standing and resources and position to get the, the job done, he was standing in a, in a, in a desert and Exodus, and Exodus 3 happened. And we haven't got time to uh, read it, but most of you will know it all anyway. Moses, burning bush, God speaks. And from these well-known verses in Exodus 3, we hear three things. And Moses learned three things. God's journey, God's call, God's vision. He suddenly had a story of discernment. Uh, he was being asked to go on a journey, a journey that began with a call from God, which is verse 4 of chapter 3, and a journey that would end with a destination from God, verse 8 of chapter 3. God's call, God's vision, God's journey. His aborted attempt 40 years ago was Moses' call and Moses' vision, and it ended up in disaster. The difference between Exodus 2 and Exodus 3 was 40 slow years of preparation and a story of discernment. And this starter's gun of call and vision occurs over and over again in Scripture. It happened with, with Adam and Abraham and Noah, with, with Joshua, with David, with Isaiah, with Jeremiah, with Jonah, with Mary, with Peter, with James and John and, and Paul. And even actually in a slightly different way with, with uh, Jesus it, um, you know, himself. It's the vital ingredient at the start of any journey for any Christian leader. The story of discernment on your life or on this season of your life doesn't have to be a, a vision of God like Isaiah or, or a burning bush 
like Moses or some great prophetic act like David, there just has to be some sense in you of a, of a call and some sense in you of where that call is heading. And, and as, as Moses dis, sort of discovered, as every uh, sort of Christian leader and planter must sort of discover, the key thing about call and vision is that they are not yours. They are not mine. They are very personal to uh, you, but they are not yours. They are God's, uh, and he simply uh, reveals them to you. He bestows them on you. The um, difference between a secular ent entrepreneur uh, and leader, somebody who is leading you know, without God, as it were, and a Christian entrepreneur and leader is that the secular vision, secular leader has vision, and the Christian leader receives vision. The, the Christian leader and planter and pioneer um, leader must have, needs to have a story of discernment. In, in 2010, I was halfway through my um, curacy and I began to speak with my in, uh, incumbent, who is now a very senior person in the Church of England, and we were talking um, about throwing around the idea of church planting into Wigan. In the church I was in, a big church, a third of people there actually lived in Wigan and we thought it would be good to sort of get them back to Wigan and do some sort of mission there. And so we began by looking at a church reboot, going into a church that was, was failing or about to close and sort of reboot it. And we, we went to see a parish that seemed to fit that sort of a, a kind of description and the uh, my incumbent thought it was good and the archdeacon thought it was good and the bishop thought it was good and the wheels started to, to, to roll. Uh, but there was one problem. I, I didn't know the language back then, but I knew something wasn't right. I didn't have my story of discernment. And I, I, I always think that was the Exodus 2 moment for me at the uh, you know, beginning of that particular journey. I had no call or vision, but it seemed to make sense. I was under a lot of pressure to do it, and it would have been easy to sort of start it, but I uh, am convinced it would have failed. I had to wait for my Exodus 3 moment, uh, and in actual fact, I didn't have to wait long. I, I had helped to plant a youth church called the uh, Unit, and it spanned across St. Helens and Wigan, and one day we went into Wigan Town Centre, and we did a sort of session there. I'd never done anything there before. As soon as I stepped in there, all I could say was I had a sense of electricity, and I know it doesn't always happen this way, and I just felt, this is it. It's Wigan Town Centre. And I went back to tell my wife, and she cried, of course. Uh, and, and then I um, went to tell my incumbent, and he said, I'll never, never sort of forget this. He said, you've got to forget about it. It's impossible. But I couldn't forget about it. it kept on coming back and I kept on plaguing him about it until he said, okay, let's examine this and see if it's God's call. And I have learnt and we have learnt sometimes painfully a lesson that is so basic that it's often overlooked. Move with a story of discernment. As a pioneer leader, it's the best answer to the big why question. Why are you doing what you are doing? Hopefully because of the living and current uh, present voice of God in your situation and because you're following that, because you have a story of discernment. And the final thing to say at this moment about call and vision, it is vital that both call and vision are strong and clear. If you don't have a call, it might well be the right thing, but you may well be the wrong person. If you don't have a vision, you might be the uh, right person, but you may well be doing the wrong thing. If you don't have a call, it will primarily hurt you. You will be constantly struggling against the wrong shape of what you are doing. If you don't have a vision, it will primarily hurt your plant. You'll be prone to um, distraction and, and detour. Uh, you'll be regularly uh, detained or going down um, cul-de-sacs. And in the, the story of Gateway, as we'll hear so later on, we had a very strong call and, but we had a weak vision. I had a strong personal call. We knew it was mission in Wigan and Wigan Town Centre, but it took some time for our vision to emerge. And by then we had gone too far down a journey to be able to um, you know, transition back to where we should have been heading. 
in that situation, and we haven't got much time to go into this, I would strongly suggest a number of things. Keep your plant team small initially. Vision is hard to be uh, discerned with a larger group. Take your time. Ensure your vision is clear uh, and strong and easily communicated. Be patient. Don't start the journey without a clearly articulated vision. And when your one-to-ones happen with your mentor, as I said earlier on, this is, uh, has to be part of this journey and cultivate. He or she will regularly ask you those four W questions. The first one will be why. Why are you doing what you're doing? And it's, it's a gentle question. It's not a threatening one. It's one to help you and not constrain you. It's a, it's a question that will cover everything you do from your call and vision down to how you manage your diary. And very few of us will have a story of a burning bush or trumpets or angels. You don't need a dramatic story, but you do need a story. Get and find and seek a story of discernment.